Well, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Afternoon Devotions here at Calvary Chapel Grants Pass. And this week, as we're looking at the topic of rest or resting in the Lord, I decided to take a vacation. So, greetings from the Keys. And so, what I want to go ahead and do is just, we'll take a moment to pray and then just see what the Lord has to say concerning rest. And so, Heavenly Father God, we're just so thankful for your word. God, we're thankful to be in your presence. God, I pray, Lord, that you would bless this time. God, that you would just speak clearly and just uh, encourage us, convict us. God, just uh, work on us as we need to be worked on. God, so we love you and we ask these things in your name. Amen. Well, I've titled today's thought or today's message, Life's a Beach. And when we look at scripture, it's very clear that God desires rest for his children, specifically Matthew. 11, 28 through 30 reads, Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart. And you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Psalms 4 8, In peace I will lie down and sleep. For you alone, O Lord, make me dwell in safety. And so we see regardless of what's going on, regardless if it's rain coming down or if you're at the beautiful beach like myself, God desires rest for his children. But what about those sleepless nights? What about those bills to pay? What about sickness you can't stop? What about the days you have to teach and you don't have anything to teach on? Well, first and foremost, I'd say that as Christians, if we're going to be successful in resting in the Lord and uh, trusting Him, first and foremost, we need to trust the sovereignty of God. Literally, we need to trust and uh, just know that He's capable. Luke 137, for nothing will be impossible with God. Psalms 23, 1 through 2, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. You guys catch that? He makes me lie down. And so we see not only does the Lord make us lie down when many of us would rather be standing up and moving and walking and going about and taking care of things, but he leads us. The word there for lead, it's nahal, and it means literally to give rest or to lead with care. And so first and foremost, for us to rest in the Lord, I'd say that we need to understand that the Lord, He's our shepherd, and He's going to make us lie down when we need to lie down, and He's going to lead us and give us rest, and He's going to lead with care. And so first and foremost, trust the, trust the sovereignty of God and trust the fact that He is going to lead us. Isaiah 58, 11. And the Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your desire in scorched places. He shall make your bones strong and you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose waters do not fail. Listen to those words. And the Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your desire in scorched places and make your bones strong and you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose waters do not fail. Fail. Psalms 37, 23. The steps of a man are established by the Lord when he delights in his way. And so I would encourage you that God knows exactly who you are, where you are, and what is going on in your life. And then secondly, if we're going to rest in the Lord, we need to be able to trust his promises. Second Corinthians 120 tells us all the promises of the Lord are yes and amen in Jesus Christ. And so you guys get that in Jesus Christ? All the promises are yours this very afternoon. And I think of the children of Israel in the book of Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 4, verses 1 through 3. It says, Therefore, while the promise of entering his rest still stands, let us fear lest any of you should seem to have failed to reach it, For good news came to us just as to them, but the message they heard did not benefit them because they were not united by faith with those who listened. And so literally, God wanted to bring them into rest, but they lacked the faith. They they lacked having confidence in the promises and the goodness of the Lord. And so the word here, interesting enough, in Hebrews 4, the word for rest here, 
It means a resting place or calming of winds or specifically, and this is key for us, the heavenly blessedness in which God dwells and of which he has promised to make persevering believers in Christ partakers after the toils and trials of life on earth are ended. One more time. The heavenly blessedness in which God dwells and of which he has promised to make persevering believers in Christ partakers after the toils and trials of life on earth are ended. And so literally God is desiring to give you rest this afternoon. Uh, you, You know, I think of having faith and resting in the Lord. And I think sometimes we can get it in our head that, you know, if we're only a little more obedient or if we're, uh, you know, if we just trust a little more or spend a little more time in prayer. And while all these things are certainly good, let me encourage you this afternoon that God is never disappointed with you. Yes, that's right. You want a wild thought? God cannot be disappointed with you. Why? Because God can't be surprised. And so literally in Romans 8 tells us that there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ. You're either in Christ or you're not. And so if you're in Christ, none of this condemns you. Not a single thing you have done or you have thought will condemn you. And so for me, that's so assuring that my darkest sins, my darkest deeds, I can rest in the promises of the Lord, knowing that in Him, in Christ Jesus, all the promises are yes and amen. So 1 Corinthians 15, 19 tells us, if in Christ we have hope in this life only, we of all people are to be most pitied. And so I bring this up because I'd encourage all of us this afternoon that resting in the Lord and finding that faith is really just trusting His, uh, you know, His sovereignty and His goodness and trusting the fact that we're going to see Him in glory. We're going to, you know, th- this life isn't all there is to come. That our, our hope And, you know, what we look forward to, it's in the next life, right? And we're going to be raised with him. Colossians 3, 1 through 3 says, If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died and your life is hidden with Christ and God. When Christ who is who is your life appears, then you will also appear with him in glory. When Christ, who is your life appears, then you will also appear with him in glory. You guys, and so this afternoon, we trust the sovereignty of God, knowing that he is capable to handle the details of our lives. And we trust the goodness of God, knowing that he loved us enough to send his son to the cross. And so we know that all the details of our life You know, they're taken care of and we can rest in his promises. And when that doesn't fail, you always have the good old green screen. God bless you guys. Take care.